clap of praise. Amen. Just. Amen. Amen. Well, no point in me messing with them buttons on that because I didn't know what I was doing. Amen. Amen. And that, that's a great lesson, y'all. When you don't know what you're doing, give it to somebody that does. Amen. Amen. Ain't, ain't, ain't nothing wrong with asking for a little help. Amen. Y'all feel all right this morning? Come on, let's give God a great big hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise just for us being here. Amen. God is good, y'all. Amen. 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 Good to see all of you this morning. We thank God for you. So we come giving honor to the Spirit of Christ and, and to all of you. It's just good to be in church again. Amen. 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 Dr. Fretwell, if you don't mind, just let me give a little housekeeping real quickly to our young folk this morning. Amen. I can't sing that great, but I know when you mess up. Amen. Just keep your eyes. Just keep your eyes on somebody that knows. Amen. 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 They, 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 they got it together all right, though. Amen. Amen. Any visitors in the house today? Do we have any visitors? Amen. No visitors in the house? Good to see you, good hope. Amen. It's just, it's just a joy to be here. Amen. Any, any, any announcements? Amen. Let's listen to our announcements. Good morning. Welcome to our worship services on today, where the Holy Spirit is always in charge. These are our upcoming church and community announcements for the week. Bus transportation is available. You can call the church at 770-787-4928 and leave a message, or you can call Reverend Dr. Audrey McClay at 773-844-2020, no later than Saturday by 7 p.m. for Sunday morning pickup. Check out our new website at www.ghbchurch.com. And we also have a new YouTube, YouTube channel at Good Hope Baptist Church, Covington, Georgia. Our weekly Bible study guide. Tuesday, men's empowerment Bible classes at 7.30 p.m. In the Good Hope Baptist Church Sister Circle Bible study at 7.30 p.m. Wednesday, we have our midweek Bible study at 7.30. They are covering Genesis chapter 9, verses 1 through 9, Noah blessed, verses 10 and 11, generations of Noah, verses 8 through 12 and verse 19, the token of the covenant, verses 20 and 24, Noah the husbandman, verses 25 and 29, Canaan cursed. Friday, we have Exploring the Scriptures with Reverend Tomlinson at 12 noon. Our classic ministry invites you to join them each Wednesday from 10.30 to 1.30 p.m. For more information, you can get with Sister Linda Bequeen. Our worship services are now streaming live on Facebook, so tell your friends and family to be sure to like us. Be a cheerful giver. Use our kiosk located in the vestibule today or download our app, Give Plus, on all your devices from your app store. The Next Level Giving campaign is going strong. If you have already pledged, thank you as you continue to give. If you have not pledged, please do so. It's not too late. Envelopes and pledge cards are in the pews. Our Mother's Ministry will be ce celebrating their annual Mother's Board anniversary on next Sunday, October 6th, during our 11 a.m. morning worship service. The speaker for this occasion is Minister Cheryl Mullins of the Word of Faith Ministries. Our youth ministry will be going to the Georgia National Fairground in Perry, Georgia on Saturday, October 5th. The entry fee is $10 for adults and children. 10 years or younger is free. 
The bus will be leaving at 8 a.m. Anyone desiring to go can see Minister Alfreda Butler today, and there's a sign-up sheet in our front vestibule. The Voices of Hope Choir Anniversary will be Sunday, October 20th at 3 p.m. Everyone is invited to come celebrate this exciting event as they sing praises to our Most High God. Our Music, Arts, and Drama Ministry is getting ready and beginning preparation for our 2019 Christmas presentation scheduled for Saturday, December 14th. Reverend Fretwell is extending an invitation to everyone especially Good Hope members and friends of all ages that have a talent, including singing, dancing, acting, etc., to become involved in this very special holiday production. Additional information will be forthcoming. Good Hope will have its general business conference on Saturday, October 26. Pastor is asking that all Good Hope members be present. The Newton County Ministers Union Countywide Revival will begin Sunday, October 6th to October 11th at New Beginnings Baptist Church located at 453 Oxford Road in Oxford, where Reverend W.G. Tigner Jr. is senior pastor. Services will start promptly at 7 p.m. Our Voices of Hope Choir and our Glorify God Dance Ministry are scheduled to be on program Wednesday, October 9th. The United Fellowship Outreach Fall Festival will be Saturday, October 19th at the Covington Legion Field Fairground located at 3183 Mill Street in Covington from 2 to 6 p.m. Admission is free and Good Hope will have a booth. So gather your family and go have some fun. This is a really great community event, so everyone please come out and support this. All Good Hope related announcements, sick and shut in notifications should be turned in to Charita Harris by 6 p.m. each Wednesday to be announced during our worship service. You may submit your ministry's announcement to her in writing. You can call the church at 770-787-4928, leave a detailed message, and you can text your information to Tarita at 770-885-8311. And you can also send an email to goodhope.baptistch at att.net. And remember, all announcements are subject to approval or modification. The entire Good Hope family sends our sincerest prayers and condolences to the family of Minister Marilyn Schofield, who made her heavenly transition on Monday, September 23rd. The entire Schofield and Johnson families appreciate all acts of kindness shared during this time. Prayer request, we are here to pray for you. The entire Good Hope family sends our prayers for peace, healing, temperance, and protection to Mr. Lewis Clark of Yazoo City, Mississippi. Our weekly birthdays for September. And remember to tell these people happy birthday. Food for thought. A lot of people lie even when they get to hell. They will say, I'm just down here looking for somebody. This concludes our announcements for this week. Be blessed and have a great week, everyone. Amen. Who are you going looking for? Okay. Let's keep all our announcements in mind and let us govern ourselves accordingly to the announcements that we've heard. Thank you, Sister Clark. Amen. Amen. Get your, get your offerings ready. Amen. I'm going to give you a half second and to dig, dig way down and get that.
while and while you're doing that, let me let me thank our men's good hope men. Oh, last evening we had a we had a good time last night. Men men showed up in numbers, and and Brother Nesbitt had a great message uh, for our men. Talked about three A's and three C's last night. Amen. And we thank all those young men that came and shared in in that banquet celebration on last evening. Um, there was some, what was those young men from Brother Dukes, the bows and the bow tie guys? Columbia Elementary School. Amen, those young men did a great job and amen and, and then Brother Justin did a great job behind them and Amen. And then God showed us something that's been coming here sitting down that I didn't know was in the house. Amen. Amen. Brother Larry Johnson and Larry Harris. Brother Larry Harris, uh, Sister Rita's husband, uh, gave a great solo. Amen. Everything was just great. And then, and then Deacon, Deacon, Arthur, Deacon Arthur walked away with uh, the award for oldest father, son, amen, amen, Deacon Richard walked away with the citizenship award, amen, and, and then something very interesting, Deacon Fred had some words of inspiration, and something happened I'd never seen in my life, I'm 63 years old, I had never seen it in my life. Amen. I know he had had to go to, y'all tell him what I said, because you don't tell him anyhow. Amen. I know he has to go to an eye doctor somewhere to get his glasses. But he came up with a Bible, some notes he had written, and some more, some more pieces of paper, and couldn't see any of it. He had this big magnifying glass in his pocket. Now you would have thought you he would have taken the glasses off and read through. No, he needed both of them. He needed the glasses and the magnifying. I've never seen that in my life. So keep living. You see and learn some stuff. Amen. Amen. But we, we had a great time. The food was great. The decoration was great. Everything was just lovely. So, Sister Linda, thank you and your staff for decorating and Brother Johnson and, and all the good food that was there. We just had a great time. So, thank you, men. Thank you, men. Thank you, men. Hold your offering up where you are. Stand on your feet, really, and hold it up real high. Amen. While you right there, there's something else just coming on my mind. It ain't got nothing to do with the spirit. It's just something I'm here at Good Hope. We was in the deacons meeting there a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, and Deacon Charles made the statement to us, I bought the church a vacuum cleaner. And everybody thanked him. Somebody asked him, somebody asked him, said, Deacon Charles, is it, com is it commercial? He said, no. I was here Friday. And I, I kid you not, Good Hope, I, when I saw it, I laughed so hard I couldn't stay in the house. I, I had to go outside. Because I hadn't seen one like that since I last watched Leave It to Beaver. <laughs> Now, a question did come out of there, come out of there, when he said he had bought one for the church. Somebody asked him, did an operator come with it? He said, yes, Robert Gaither. <laughs> Amen. But he made it all make sense. At the end of the day, he said, Reverend, it didn't cost but $9. Okay. 
Okay, I, I, I see why he couldn't pass up that deal. Amen. 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 But I said all that to say to you, good hope. God is still doing some awesome things. God is still doing some awesome things. Now, 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 that doesn't, may not sound like much, but it serves a purpose. There's a purpose for it. It's a purpose for it because I saw Deacon Charles with it, and he did not have it on the floor. He had it on the pew. And so that is a purpose for it now. Okay. 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 Thank you, Deacon Charles. Amen. Your heart was there. Amen. Hold your offering up real high. Our Father, we thank you for all that you are doing and all that you have already done. We thank you in advance for that which you will do. And Father, we thank you for the blessing that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you for letting us take a moment to give a portion of that back to you that you've already blessed us with. We come realizing and recognizing it's yours anyhow. You just let us borrow it for a little while, and we just come to give a portion back to you. We thank you. We pray that you are blessed right now. Bless both this thy gift and these thy givers. We ask it in your son Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Will you be directed by our ushers, please? <laughs>
consecrate us for thy service, Lord, and let thy will be lost in thine. Father God, we come right now at this appointed time preparing to give to your people what you have given us for this present age. Father, we ask thee right now that we ask always that you would let your preacher stand up and your flesh man to sit down to speak a word to your people here and everywhere. For this world is hungry for the living bread. And for an answer, you gave the key. You said, if I be lifted up above the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. And I realize, Master, that I must decrease so that thou might increase and get the glory. This is your servant's prayer. In Jesus the Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. All in obedience to God Almighty. To each of you, my father's children, it is indeed gl glad to be here once again in the house of the Lord. Are you glad to be here? Amen. 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 We know it's the fifth Sunday, but it's still the Lord's day. Amen. Every day that was made, God made them all. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to be before you too long. Thank you, Pastor Tomlinson, for sharing your pulpit with all the ministers here at Good Hope and for this opportunity right now. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that. Amen. Let's not hold you too long. If you would go with me to the book of Judges, the book of Judges, the 16th chapter, and a few of the verses, verses thereof, amen, because God is truly saying something to us out of the book of Judges, and I need your listening ear, amen, I need your listening ear. Starting at verse 4, then we're going to go to verse 5, then 16 and 17, and then 19 and 28. Now, we, we know that the Atlanta Falcons is playing today, and I know some of you want to hurry up and get home so you can see a little bit of that game, a little bit of that game. But if you would work with me, we will hurry up and get out of here. Amen. And you remember, Pastor explained to you the difference between what a dialogue is. Now, I'm going to catch on to that bandwagon right along with him and tell you, if you help me, we can hurry up and get out of here. Amen. 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 Judges, the 16th chapter, beginning at the fourth verse, and it comes to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. And the Lord of the Philistines came unto her and said unto her, Entice him, and see wherein his strength lieth, and by what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him. And we will give thee, every one of us, 1,100 pieces of silver. And we go down to the 16th verse, and it says, And it came to pass, when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him, so that his soul was vexed unto death, that he told her all his heart, and said unto her, There had not come a razor upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. And if I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. And she made him sleep, the 19th verse says, and she made him sleep upon her knees. And she called for a man, and she called him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him. And his strength went from him. And the 28th verse says, and Samson called unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray, pray thee, once 
Only this once, O oh God, that I may be at once avenger of the Philistines for my two eyes. Amen. Out of these verses that we just read, I want to use for a subject on to this morning, thank you, I want to use for a subject, sleeping in the wrong woman's lap. Sleeping in the wrong woman's lap. My brothers and sisters, those of us that have been in love and are still in love can relate to Samson. For those who doesn't know this is one of the many love stories recorded in the Bible. Reminds us of an old Shakespeare classic that some of us have read about. Not only is this a love story, but this is a story filled with lies, deceit, hurt, pain, agony, and even death. Many of you can testify with me that sometime love hurts. And sometime in all of our lives, lo our love has and will be tested. And just to let you know, I got a verse above it. As long as you keep on living, love will always be a test. Whether it's with your husband or your wife, your woman or your man. I even heard, I paused there for a second because I wanted to get your reaction to that. Or even the young generation today, they even call them their dip or their boo thing. Yes, sometimes love hurts. And if love don't hurt sometimes, you need to question that relationship. Because sometimes we don't always do everything that we are supposed to do. And I, and I thank God daily that he gave me a wife such as what he gave me because there have been some time Alex should have left years ago. Because I, I, I tell anybody, I haven't always did things right. But because God gave, every preacher needs a good wife. And, and, I, and I think that when God gave me her with 30 some years ago, he gave me the best. And, 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 and she didn't even know I was going to preach today. I didn't tell her this. But she's sitting right here and I got to give her flowers while she lived because a lot of times when, when the world had cast me to the wolves, scandalized my name and called me everything but a child of God, Alice stood there. Be because she, she was telling me all the time, I see something in you that others don't see. And, and, and as long as you're right and you're doing what the Lord called you to do, you ain't got to never, never worry about no trouble from me. Even when sometimes your own loved ones throw stones at you. But thanks be unto God for a strong love. Yes, even my brothers and sisters, family will test your love. Even at the church, love is tested. And I need to tell you something. Everybody that comes to the church don't love the church. From the pulpit to the door, some just come to get what they can get. You don't believe me? Just keep on living. And I, and I want you to start off and just watch the pulpit, for example. And, and see what you see when it's time for giving in the church. 
I, I have a problem with a lot of preachers. When they come into the church, they want to take everything they can from the church and don't want to give the church anything. Watch them in offering time and see do they give. And, or then better yet, when you take up them a love offering to give to them and see if they give it back because they didn't give anything. When we as preachers, we ought not want you to do anything if we're not willing to do it ourselves. Hello, lights. We must lead by example. If I ask you to give and now I'm not willing to give it myself, I need to sit down and stop preaching. Now, I've been doing this thing a long time now. I just started yesterday. I've been doing it a long time. Second generation preacher. But one thing I know for myself that, that when it comes down to the house of God, you ought to be able to do everything that you can for the church. And a lot of times people may say that I ain't going to give it because the pastor ain't going to do them a take it and spin. But I need to tell you one thing that when you come to the house of God and you give God your tithe and your offering, it is not for you to worry about what the pastor do. Because you're giving it to God, not the pastor. And for those of you that thought you were giving it to the pastor, shame on you. Bible school is Sunday school where you need to be to learn exactly how the finances of the church is and what it's for. You must understand, you must understand that once you give to God what belongs to God, it is not for you to worry about because one thing the scripture tells us, do not give it grudgingly. Not only that, the scripture also said that God loves a cheerful giver. And if you got to give something to the church and you got to give it with rocks in your jaw, God wants you to keep it. He don't want it. We must understand that if we love our church, we're going to do everything that we can for the uplifting of God's kingdom. And I need to tell you something else, good hope, this is just us here on today. It is not just one set of group of people's responsibility to take care of good hope. It is all of our responsibilities if you see the floor needs sweeping, and ain't nobody say one person got to sweep the floor all the time. The windows need washing. The floor need mopping. The bathrooms need cleaning. The pastor's office need clean. Show how you love your church. And then not only that, love is an action word. Maybe sometimes you don't really love the church because you don't want to do nothing. Look out now. And not only that, my brothers and sisters, saints, we must understand that when we love something, sometimes it's good to be quiet. To the married folks here, if you're married, keep your bedroom love secrets to yourself. The way you show you show your love to your husband or your wife is private. You don't need to be telling everything you do with your husband or your wife to a single man or a single woman. Because soon as the job sends you away somewhere, they're going to be coming knocking on your door for a cup of sugar. Don't mean you no good. That's why, now, 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 listen now, let me tell you something now. Just because they're singing, all single folks ain't wrong. But sometimes when somebody ain't got nobody and they looking for somebody and you start telling them everything what you do, they gonna want to find out how is it. Huh. 
coming looking for a cup of sugar and they ain't came looking for none when you was at home. And then all of a sudden they show up when you are gone. That's why it's best to keep what you do in your house personal. We must understand that it's, it's all right to talk to single people and tell them what to do in order to have a successful and a long-term marriage, but you ain't got to tell them everything. Sometimes things, good things come with patience and Patience comes with long suffering and long understanding and staying in the trenches through the thick and the bad, the good and the not so good. That's what, that's what Samson's problem was. He fell in love with a woman who meant him no good. He loved her, but she wasn't in love with him. But what he brought to the table. If we read in the fifth verse of the 16th chapter of Judges, the Lord of the Philistines promised Delilah 1,100 pieces of silver for the info of how they could subdue Samson. And I need you to understand something else, my brothers and sisters. That there's a lot of Delilahs in the church, both male and female. Don't mean us any good. But they're willing to sell us off for the highest piece of silver. And not only that, they don't care nothing about themselves either. We must understand that when things like this happen... We must understand that if they did it to Jesus, they'll do it to us. Because the more and the closer you walk with him, if they scandalize his name, what makes you think they'll do to your name? If they lied on him, talked about him, mistreated him, called him everything but a child of God, what make you think? that they'll do you any different. Go back and start reading verse 6, and you will see that on several occasions, Delilah tried finding out how to render Samson helpless, and it was to no avail. Just like Samson had the wrong woman, in his life, in the church universal, that sometimes the wrong person come in our lives. And you've given your most personal possession to. And they wasn't even worth it. They were just promised a payoff like Delilah. My brothers and sisters, before you get cozy with the fall in love with someone, you need to talk to Jesus. Because he must be the one to make sure that you have the right somebody. And you must be very careful about who you let get close to you. Listen now, my brothers and sisters, everyone that says, Lord, Lord, doesn't mean they're saved. Something problem was lying on Delilah's lap. Some of the saints have laid on the laps of the enemy, and the enemy has handcuffed you to a bad situation. Listen now, we are in this world, but not of this world. Now Samson was a Nazarite from his mother's womb. And a Nazarite mean a Jew bound to a vow to leave his hair uncut, to abstain from wine and strong drink, and to practice extraordinary purity of life and devotion. 
try after try. To hurt Samson, Delilah played the sympathy card on him. Just as we get done sometime. And not only that, just as Delilah was a good actor, there are good actors in the church. And they oftentimes will play the sympathy card just to get a rise out of you. And it caused Samson to pour out his soul. Some saints sleep in the bed with the enemy. The enemy even eat our food, run up our light bill, and never give us a dime to buy anything. Yes, now, my brothers and sisters, I'm getting ready to close here now. And I need to tell you that it's not good to let your right hand know what the left hand is doing. We all know who and what Delilah was. After Samson felt bad and laid his head on her lap and told her that there not a razor is to touch his head. And if his hair is cut off, he would be like any other man. So I stepped and laid his head on the line of the lap. She slowly rubbed his head until he slowly fell asleep. Then Delilah called for the Philistines. And they came in to shave the locks of his head. Not only did they cut Samson's hair, but they blinded Samson also and put him in prison. Mocked him and used him for sport. There was a lad there. They had led Samson around. And Samson told the lad to put him between the two pillars. Because there was a party and a feast going on. And by this time, Samson's hair had started back growing. And he felt his strength started to return. And he said, Lord, remember me, your servant. Let me avenge my eyes for being put out. And he said to the lad, put me between the two pillars. And above them is where the party that was going on. And the Philistines were having themselves a ball. And the Samson stood there between the two pillars. And he started praying to God. God, give me my strength. And as his strength started to come through his body, Samson stood there between the pillars with all of the might that he had in his body. And he avenged his eyes. And all those that had afflicted him was killed because of the pillars that held up the city. That they all fell and was killed in their death. And the moral to the story is when this world treats you like you're nobody, I need you to fall down on your bend and knees and say, Father, I stretch my hand to thee, for there's no other help that I know if you would draw your hands from me. Oh, whether shall I go, Jesus? When this world casts you to the wolves and they do everything to you and try to cast you down, there is a man named Jesus that is able to lift your bowed down heads. There is a man named Jesus that took nails in his hands for you. They riveted his feet. They pierced his side. They hung him high. They stretched him wide. They put a crown of 72 thorns on his head. He hung his head in the locks of his shoulder and he died.
the early Sunday morning. Early Sunday morning, he got up with all power, trusted in his hand, with all power. All I want you to understand out of this story is when the world, this world can offer you nothing but heartache and pain. This world can't offer you shelter from the storm and the rain. But when this world treats you as such, all I want you to do is remember that because God is in you, great is he that is in all of us than he that's in the world. God can take you through a bad situation. And he said, he said, Lo, I'll be there with you always. And even when things seem like they're at you at your worst, that's when God will show up and be at his best. God bless you. Amen. Let us stand. The door of the church is open. The door of the church is open. The door is open. And I would that when you have some time that you go back and you look at that entire 16th chapter of the book of Judges. Samson was a mighty man to violence. And I think that calls for a self-examination. Watch where you lay your head. still open. But at the end of the day, I like what Samson said. He said, Lord, remember me, thou servant. And if you don't mind, Lord, give me my strength just one more time. Have you ever asked God for one more? Just one more. Give me my strength one more time and let me avenge my sight. Give me my strength just one more time and let me die with my enemy. Whatever you need for God to do, just ask him for one more chance. I heard somebody say he's a God of a second chance. We get ready to go now. If you desire a prayer, will you come to the altar? Will you come? Will you come? Will you come?
what a mighty God we serve. Take somebody by the hand where you are. Now God had Reverend McClay to tell you about sleeping in the wrong woman's lap now I know you view that as a physical person but let me help you understand that real quickly God is waiting to bless somebody But he can't do it just yet because you got your head in the wrong lap. It could be the lap of lust, the lap of pleasure, the lap of envy. Watch where you have your head lying. And if you messed up, You ain't the first one that's messed up. You're not the only one that has messed up. And if you keep living, there's going to be some more mess ups. And ain't no point in you telling us everything because we just going to run and tell somebody else. And we can't forgive you anyhow. When you when you know you messed up. Go to the Father. And he said, I'll be just to forgive you. And when you can't get to any of us, when you can't get to any of us, you can always get to him. You can always get to the Father. Now, you know, it's bad when you can't get to your daddies. Let, let me run my mind back. I saw the clip not long ago of something on PBS. And it was a clip of President John F. Kennedy in all of his secret service and CIA folk was around him. And if you and I had walked in and tried to get to him, we would have been stopped. But his little boy pushed his way through the Secret Service men, pushed his way through all of that protection and went up and pulled on the coattail of his daddy. All I'm trying to say to you to help you see, understand is that, that we have a daddy. Doesn't matter who else is around him, we can always get to him. We can always get to him. Now, Father, we come now with thanksgiving in our hearts, recognizing that you have been good to us and you have brought us and not we ourselves. But at the same time, Father, we come with our heads draped in the locks of our shoulders, knowing that, that you've already blessed us and just ask that you just bless us again. 
that you know all about us. You know our heart's desires. You know what we stand in the need of. So, so whatever it is, Father, that you that we, you see we need blessing, bless us one more time. Bless us one more time. And then, Father, look upon bereaved families everywhere and give them a heart and a mind to understand that you're still God all by yourself that you're still too wise to make mistakes and that, that you still hold the whole world in the palm of your hand. And if, and if they would just lean on you, if they would just trust in you that everything will be all right, that, that you are still able to wipe tears from their eyes, that you're still able to mend up their broken hearts, and you're still able to make life all right for them. Then those that are sick, that you're still a doctor in a sick room, that you still got medicine in the hem of your garment that, that's good for the healing of a nation. Would you bless right now that you are still making ways out of no way, that you're, that you're still light in darkness, that you're still the God that is able to do any and everything that you want to do. Would you bless right now? come giving you all the honor we come giving you all the praise and we give you the glory right now and we come with a heart of thanksgiving as is already done look on each of us right now look on each of us right now Search our hearts, search our minds, and keep on blessing. In the name of Jesus, in the precious name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, amen, amen, amen. God bless you. You have a blessed day.